Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And we're back. We're back, baby. Took a few weeks off on the round table, but here we are. The usual suspects, minus the technician. We got the big pop. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? So good, man. Just dying of heat out here, though. Yeah, no, I know it. I know it. We've got the nightcap OG dude buddy, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I'm, I'm doing well. It's hot up here, too. Hot and, hot and humid. Hot and humid. Yeah. Not a dry Absolutely. heat. It's a lot worse up here. Yeah. Speaking of hot and humid, Bearland Aaron makes me hot and humid. Bearland <laughs> oh, Aaron, how are yeah. you? <laughs> Pretty good. Just getting ready to uh, storm Area 51. Just kidding. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. The most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? Doing great. We're registering at 99 degrees today here in D.C. Yeah, y'all. Oh, my gosh. Good hot for us. That's, that's insane. That's mm-hmm. insane. And then breathing in the mailing, breathing out the marketing, the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Good. It's hot up here, but I'll tell you what, it's better for the butter when you spread it on your corn muffin. It melts at night. <laughs> better for the butter. I love that. That's my new saying. It's better for the butter. <laughs> Spreads nice on that corn muffin when it's room temperature. I, I actually think we have a show title. <laughs> better for the butter. <laughs> Round Hill Podcast. And of course, last but not least, you know him, you love him. The Land Geek Sherpa. The Flight School Sherpa, I should say. He's a Land Geek Sherpa too. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. If you're going to start automating your Facebooks, the Facebooks, Facebook and Craigslist postings. And of course, if you want to start learning anything under the sun, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I do not know how to even compete against the butter spreading. <laughs> Going with today's topic because that whole exchange that Mike Zano just shared made me very uncomfortable. It's kind of it's kind of the drop the mic moment. Like, oh, you almost stopped the round table after that. <laughs> like what, how, I mean, we should have just ended there. That might have been the highlight of the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But we do have some valuable information to share. And we had a really good topic come up. If you to start all over again, where would you start? How would you start? What would you do differently? And I think we should start with Bearland Aaron because why not? Bearland Aaron, if you could do it all over again, where would you start? I guess. Um... I would actually start in a similar fashion. I mean, we took pretty good action on the mailings right off the bat and deal flow is kind of king. So that's, I felt that was good, but honestly, I think if I had to do it again, I would probably go a little bit longer in or a little further into the business before I started coaching. Um, We didn't have flight school when I started, Um, I think what I would do is probably start with flight school because, um, I honestly got a little overwhelmed, um, with just the, the volume of information, you know, and it wasn't necessarily too fast. It was just my ability to assimilate it with, you know, what I had going on in life and everything else. Um, I probably would have maybe liked to have a little more under my belt before, I took off into kind of maybe the advanced end of it a little bit, you know? So um, I think if I had to do it over again, I would probably start with flight school and then go into one-on-one coaching. Um, That's that's kind of the the difference that I would make because I think it would make it a lot easier. There'd be a whole lot of action on the basics before, you know, we tried to go to the next level. So that's, that's probably my biggest change that I'd make. Yeah. And we actually agree with you. So people that go into one-on-one coaching, they have to start in flight school 
And then they go into one-on-one coaching because I think you're right, actually. So in the spirit of Kaizen, we're constantly improving the, uh, the training programs. And that was one of the, the things that we were seeing was, you know, in the beginning, people were just drinking from a fire hose. And uh, this way, it, it's, it's slower. You get your fundamentals down and then um, you accelerate in, in the one-on-one. Um, but I think that's a really good, good thing to, to bring up. Uh, Mimi Schmidt, how about you? How, how would you start differently? Well, you're on mute, Mimi. I would have not been so apprehensive and I just would have listened to my coaches. I would have mailed and marketed and I wouldn't have stopped mailing when I thought I, you know, oh gosh, I'm getting nervous. I'm going to stop mailing because I have all this inventory I haven't sold yet. I should have just listened to what my coaches said and just done it, done more of it a lot sooner, more mailing and more marketing, just blown it up. Right. Because it's like Eric Peterson says, it takes a lot more ads than most people realize. So that's what I would have done. Just a lot more sooner and not been so apprehensive. Because I still feel apprehensive when I go into a new market. You know, I kind of tiptoe in, put a couple ads in there, right? And kind of wait to see. So, yeah. All that worry for nothing. My coach is new. (laughs) No, I think, but I think it's natural, just this natural fear of the unknown. And um, I could see that. I think we see that a lot. And it, yeah. it is that it is sort of that typical, uh, you know, fight or flight response people yeah. have after the first, say, 60 days and they get their offers out and then they're waiting and then they're scared to keep the machine going because they're just not fully, they know intellectually it works right. because it just, there's just so much overwhelming proof, but they don't know that it works for them, for them that's it. and that's where it gets scary that's, that's right. where you, you need you know the tate litchfield loving kick in the tush to be like okay keep doing it right i knew you guys could do it i didn't know if i could do it so right. we needed to yeah Just no, I, I, I think that's a really good point to uh to bring up because i, I mean it's it's very very common um zen master mike zeno what would you, if you could do it all over again, where would you, would you what would you do differently when you're just starting? Ah, yeah, that's a good question. It's, it's kind of tough for all of us because there wasn't the, we already talked about the flight school, it wasn't in place, right? So, I mean, I think we're all going to default back to that fundamental, you know, but I remember having many conversations with you and it was, I probably would have removed my scarcity mentality sooner than later. And, you know, I'd ask you, Mark, what I'm thinking about doing this or that. And you're like, well, do them both. I'm like, but I can't. Yes, you can. You know, it's like, I would, I would limit myself with my beliefs of what the success would be and think that it was this or that. And, you know, just a little bit too timid. I think that once you understand this model and the power that it has, um, you just take that massive action. I would have surrounded myself with, all of you sooner. I would have been, it's the group, it's the group that really helps, right? Um, just that support. There's nobody else I can talk to about this business, literally. Like, who do I talk to? There's nobody. So like normal people, like fresh to spend an hour explaining the concept to them and then they still probably don't get it. And then you can start, and it's like, it comes off like you're bragging or it's just, it doesn't work. You need a support group of people that will be there and help you because there's ups and downs. And, uh, and then finally, I would have got my system sooner. Um, I always talk about, because, you know, um, I remember starting, I remember Scott Todd was there and quiet in the background, but little I know he was plotting all these systems and all these, all these methods and creating things like, uh, like LG Pass and all these other things in place. And, and he just launched like a skyrocket and it was like, what, where'd he go? Like, here's the, and it was, it was because he did the systems and it took me a while to embrace that. Um, I did a lot too much of my own. And when you do too much of it yourself, you, you can't scale. And if you can't scale, you can't grow. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so true. And, and, and Scott has become such an expert in systems and automation that it looks just like him on the round table right now on video that's his hologram he's actually on his boat <laughs> you know going around no, he's windsurfing channels i'm getting all these videos <laughs> on on voxer you know scott's here scott's there 
And I mean, you could see like the color in his face, but this is an incredible hologram of him. And he's efficiently using his time doing that. I, although, Tate, is he on the plane or the boat? I can't. Hard to tell. I, you know, obviously I'm not seeing any wind moving through the hair, so it's hard to tell. I'm assuming. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Wow. Or, uh, actually, I think he's on the plane because he's, you know, safe and sound and it's nice and quiet in there. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is love or hate. I'm not sure which one this is. It just started out as love and then it turned a little bit into jealousy, Scott, because, I yeah. mean, you're just like so cool. Well, thank you, Tate. So are you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Hey, buddy. <laughs> the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman, what would you have done differently in the very beginning? Oh, you're on mute, Scott. Sorry. Oh, geez, now my video's gone. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, so many things. So, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people who are just on the verge of their journey, and uh, I explained it to them, you know, for beginners, you have two pathways. You have pathway A, which is the toolkit, and you, it's a ton of information. You have pathway B, it's flight school, it's execution in real time right away. I was a toolkit guy. I can't tell you how much blood, sweat, and tears I expired on the toolkit. It was difficult. It was hard. So to be able to leverage my time and energy and knowledge with the programs that we have today, I mean, in a heartbeat, and we keep going back to this, in a heartbeat, if I had to do it all over again, I would take that flight school path over the toolkit because why reinvent the wheel? And things are already up and running. Uh, you're learning a recipe, you're, you're using systems. So that'd be the first thing uh, is, um, uh, is I would definitely take that pathway knowing what I know now without a doubt. Um, Mike touched on this a little bit, but uh, I... I would say that in the first two years of, of my land investing journey, I was very effective, but I was not efficient. So I was doing too much of the work myself. And, and I'm a little bit of a, probably a control freak like Scott Todd and don't want to pass things off too much. So um, that Scott was supposed to laugh at that, but anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, so so I, I, you know, I had a hard time delegating uh, all the things I wanted to. And, and just realized that eventually I needed to, to just, you know, expand my horizons a little bit and do that. And then uh, I guess a technical thing I would have done is um, I probably, if I could go back now, I would have sold some notes on some of my passive income on, on some of my terms deals. I think that's a strategy that a lot of people don't take uh, advantage of enough when they're first starting out. Yeah, so that that would be definitely something I would I would probably employ. Um, Scott talked to me about it, but I I don't know I just didn't I didn't uh, didn't take the take the leap there. So I probably would I probably would do that if I had to do it do it all over again. All right, fantastic, Big Papa. What would you have done differently? You know, I I think mine's pretty simple, and that's get advice and help. I, I mean, like so many, I, I tried to just solve this giant riddle on my own. And it wasn't until I started having really deep, intimate conversations with, you know, Mark and that things really started to happen. And that's, I think, you know, I'm very happy with where I'm at and what I've done and what we've built, but man, I lost a year, right? Where could I be if I had just asked for help sooner? I think that's my biggest uh, regret, I guess. And uh, I, I don't know. I, that's why I really like working as a coach and helping people because I get messages from people who are, who are asking for help. And it might seem like a simple equation or a simple, simple answer or a question, but they get the help. And that might be the breakthrough that they need to progress their business that much further. So asking for help, I, I guess I was trying to do it on my own. And I was true. I was too afraid of telling other people what I was doing because I knew what the margins were and the numbers and everything was so amazing that I was afraid of other people coming in and doing it better than me and pushing me out of it, I guess. So scarcity mentality, I guess, too. 
Yeah, no, that, that totally makes sense. I, I know for the first maybe 10 years that I was in business, everybody thought I was a drug dealer in my, in my neighborhood. Like, <laughs> like, I didn't tell anybody what I did. It's kind of embarrassing now. Very, I still I, don't, I, but yeah. I kind of like that. Like my neighbors, they have no idea. And I kind of like it that way. Just rides his bike a bunch and hangs out at home and goes to lunch. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> yeah. You just, you just like to haze them. It's like, uh, well, I think Tate's the only one that's going to get this reference. The, the J. Cole song, Neighbors. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. All if you right. don't know what we're talking about, go check it out. It's funny. It's really good. It's really good. It is a good song. It is a good song. It's a great song. Yeah. Um, the Hologram, Scott Todd. Okay, I, I am live. I'm not anywhere else. I'm not a hologram. I am who I say I am. So there you go. I cleared that here on that one. Now, that's exactly what a hologram would say. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, uh, let me, my Google, what can I say? Uh, look, here, I think, Mark, what I would do differently is um, there is a tendency, and I don't really know where it comes from, and, and we all have it. I see it over and over and over again, and that is, like, we choose a county, and we feel like we need more counties. Like, oh, I need five counties. I need 10 counties. I need to, I need to be, like, and I think, I found, I think where I feel, uh, fell in this trap is that what was happening was I was going and looking at these other land sellers and you see these other land sellers. Well, they're in this county and they're in that county. They're in all these other counties. And it's so hard to remember that they have been doing this for some time longer than me. And when you're starting, you want to be big like them. But the reality is, is that they probably only start in one county at one time. That's the reality. All right. Like the they stayed in the county. They grinded it out. I know Mimi did that. Uh, she was in the county, this one county for forever. She, she had laser focus. And I, I definitely looked at Mimi as she was doing this and thinking like, man, I wish I would have done that. Because what happens is you begin to sp uh, spread yourself too thin. You're trying to crack the code on all these counties. And it's not just that. It's every county has a different buyer's list. You got to market in those counties and you got to build – build your name and your reputation in that particular market. And it's like creating three, four, five companies all at one time. And I think that's a big struggle that people have is, yeah, you want to be big. You want to have all this land. But I'll tell you what, I know a guy that he's been doing this for like 35 years. He's in one county. Like he just stays in the county and he keeps chiseling away at this one county for 35 years. And if you want to talk about like, you know, resilience and stick to itiveness, this guy has seen the county in good days and bad days. He has grinded it out. And I think if I were to go back, what I would do is I would find that one county. And, you know, I might, I might, it might have taken me a while, but actually I say that, but I'm thinking back like the county I do most of my deals in, it probably is one of the first counties that I started in. So you, you'll kind of gravitate to these things. And I just kept plowing away on that piece. And I would just put more resources, all chips on the table. And I would have gone in all there as opposed to spread myself out amongst all these counties because I want to be like the guy that's, that's working in 10 different counties or whatever it is because I think he's cool and big. I think that's an, an interesting, uh, you know, commentary on, on the business because it comprises so many different things as far as mindset and um, focus and all these elements is just you know, that first county. How many counties do I start in? And I'd be curious, Barry and Aaron, when you first started, was that something that you struggled with? Was focusing on one county, two counties, ten counties? Um, I think we started with two counties. Uh, well, no, I mean I started with one. You know, the first one. I'm still in that county. I love that county. Um, you know, we expanded into another one because my wife, Melissa, and I were doing it together. So she chose a county. We went into that. Um, and since then, um, though I have bought and sold in some other counties, um, I've only got really one other that I'm consistently mailing to. Um, I might still always be testing some new areas. Um, I've got a new one that I'm going to be testing out based on 
um, response I've been getting from the market. You know, do you have anything near here? And once you hear that enough times, you start to look and see if, you know, is this a possible area? Are other people buying and selling here and that sort of thing? Um, but yeah, getting spread too thin is, you know, a much bigger detriment than, um, than what you think you would accomplish by acting too big, you know, um, just be an expert in an area and be that expert. And it's gonna, I think it's gonna pay dividends for you. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Scott Bossman, how about you? Was that a, a, an initial struggle? It was an initial struggle. And uh, I wish I had been a little bit more uh, resolute in staying where I had had success because I had actually done uh, a few deals in a county and then got the itch to move somewhere else, I, I think, for, for whatever reason. Um, so I, I definitely, uh, if, if I had to do it all over again, I think I would, I would uh, stick to that first county because I was having success in it. Um, I don't know why I branched out too soon. Uh, I think I, I may have had some issues maybe selling a, a lot or two in that county. And, and I, I just didn't know at the time what I didn't know that they would all sell. And I got impatient. So, you know, looking for, for other uh, opportunities, I guess, uh, was, was what I was doing. Um, and, and I ended up wasting some time on that. And I wasted some mailers on it because uh, I went to a different county and I didn't do enough county research. It happened to be a neighboring county. But uh, it, tell you what, it, even though it's neighboring, it was completely different. And I tanked on my mailings for probably a month. Uh, so, so, yeah, I would definitely um, stick to one county and then uh, become sure-footed there and then branch out. Yeah, yeah. How about you, uh, Mimi? I get this question a lot in flight school office hours because people, they want to go, right? They want to ramp up their businesses. And there, I know a guy that was in boot camp, started boot camp one before me, who's in one county and has $20,000 in passive income a month in one county, Okay. So um, if people want to do more with your business, mail and market more in your county, right? Become the SME, become the go-to guy. Um, I, yeah, I've been in my, I'm still in my county. I just sold a piece of land there in the last month. So I don't do much there anymore because the margins have gone up or gone down so much. But uh, yeah, three years. So yeah, don't feel like you got to move around. There's so much to do in this business. Change, getting into a bunch of counties, isn't it? Nice. Zen Master? Well, this reminds me of high school, Mark, because my mother told me every time I get my heart broken, she's like, Mike, high school girls are fickle. And that word is like fickle. Don't be the fickle land investor. You know, and that happens to, I think, a lot of people in the beginning. With, you know, I was bouncing here, there, and everywhere. You're right. And um, settling in is really important. So, hey, this goes in line with Scott Todd. I was talking about land investing. He relates it to relationships, right? So in the beginning, you're a little fickle. You're finding that one that you love. And then when you find it, you better stick with it because that's where your buyer's list is. That's where your deal. And look, we've heard examples of people making here uh, lots of money. So don't be the fickle land investor. Yeah, I was such a geek in high school. I wish I could have that conversation with my mom. <laughs> like, I didn't even have that opportunity. Um. But look I don't at you believe now. you. I don't believe you. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Scary. Girls were scary. So I was so <laughs> awkward in high school. Um, Tate, how about you? Yeah, you know, same thing as everybody else. I'm I'm still actually in the. I wouldn't say it was the first county that I mailed to, but it was the first county that I started to connect with. I still do a majority of my business there. And it's always funny when I hear people say like, yeah, I started having success and then I looked for a new challenge and it's like, wait, what? You started selling land, making money, and then you decided to restart that and go, so maybe that's just not how I think. I'm boring. I want to do the same deal over and over and over again, a million times over. And as long as I'm making money, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, there's a phrase in fishing, it's like, Never leave fish to go find fish, right? Never leave money in a proven area to go find more money. So stay put. If you're having success, do not reinvent it. Just keep doing it. Buckle it down. Like Scott, I have plenty of friends in the business who have been in the same counties their entire career. And I've asked them if they're bored. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it's kind of boring. Guess what? 
Land investing is not exciting. It's not supposed to be. That's why we're able to outsource it. That's why we're able to grow it and build it and work only two hours a week because it's predictable. And exciting, you know, new changes aren't predictable. Therefore, you can't outsource those. So my advice is stay put if you're having success. Yeah, I mean, if you're bored making money, you know, take up jujitsu or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Email Zeno, like get a, get a hobby, you know, learn chess. I don't know. But don't just switch counties because you're tired of making money in that county and you're bored with it. <laughs> no, it's, it's a really good point. I'll, I'll tell you, when I, when I first started, um, one of my biggest regrets was just flipping for cash. Boy, do I wish you guys were there just to, to grab me by the back of the neck and be like, what are you doing? Um, you know, Shaquille O'Neal has a, has a great uh, quote. He's like, you know, basketball players are rich. He's like, but the owner is wealthy. And I really didn't get that concept until I started doing terms because you get the income, but you still own the underlying asset and you just keep building your wealth that way and your passive income. And when you look at it from that perspective, cash is great. There's nothing wrong with it, but now you got a new problem. Now you got to deploy more cash and you just never get out from under it. Um, and Scott Todd, why are you smiling? No, it just reminds me, Mark. Like I was talking to someone the other day. Now, remember, I was talking to a group of entrepreneurs and the way that they think is they think like, okay, I make sales. And they think like, oh, what's the lifetime value of a customer? And they think of all this, all this stuff. And I'm trying to explain to them our, our business, right? Like I'm trying to explain it to them. And if, if you could have seen the, the table, if you could have seen this table of people, of these entrepreneurs that are just trying to conceive what I'm saying to them. Like, yeah, some of my customers, they'll pay for like four or five months and they'll run off. I'll never hear from them again. They ghost me and it's okay because then I turn around, I get another thousand dollars and you know, like uh, it, it, it's the nuttiest business you ever, you've ever seen in your entire life. And so even, I even have to laugh sometimes because even the people that we're talking to, they're in the business that they might be new here's the thing that they, that they forget sometimes is that people get so nervous about like overpaying on a property. Well, just because let, let's just say like someone the other day was telling me that they were concerned about paying overpaying by like $200. Like, Oh my gosh, if I overpay by $200, what's that going to mean? Well, it really doesn't mean anything because when you look at it from the whole scheme of things, like I had a property in, in Arizona that is out by the grand Canyon. I bet you I sold that thing three or four times. I bet you I collected about, I think I paid 700 for it. We just sold it two weeks ago for 2000 cash. And I was deeply saddened because I probably over the years I've been doing, this is one of the first properties I bought. I probably have collected about, um, I'm going to say about 4,000 on the property, somewhere in that range. Let's say 4,000 on a $700 investment. And I was literally disappointed that it sold for cash. I was like, no, because it's a, you're buying, whether you realize it or not, once you start selling these things on terms and people start leaving, they start cycling through, it's like you're renting dirt. It's the greatest strategy ever. Like the dirt never goes away. No, it, it is the ultimate subscription model. I think the only thing that might be better is life insurance. But the problem is it's, that's a 10-year gig. Because life insurance, you know, it's just an idea, right? But if you're at a party and you tell somebody you're a land investor versus a life insurance salesman, it's a very different conversation. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, first of all, you tell me what you're a land investor, like, I uh, doesn't compute. Like, yeah, that's true. What does that, what does that mean? Well, you, forget it. I can't, I can't yeah. explain it to you. Like, <laughs> you know, like literally they were telling, these entrepreneurs were telling me like that, that, um, like they were giving me, they were trying to give me advice and I'm like, like on how to retain the customers. And I'm like, I don't really want to retain them. Like I'm saddened when they, when I, when I have to like give them the deed, it's, it's a sad event. <laughs> it's completely different than any other type of real estate that you're selling. You're, you're normally happy to sell. I sold a property, but when you sign that deed away, it's like, no, I got rid of one of my soldiers. 
Yeah. No, that, that was like the biggest mistake. I think the other one was just having this scarcity mindset of everything in my life, mostly not valuing my time correctly and thinking I was Superman and I should be doing everything and couldn't grow the business that way. I couldn't scale because I was doing everything. And once I let go, things really uh, were able to take off. But that took, gosh, did I waste a lot of time trying to figure this stuff out. It's very sad looking back. You know what? I don't even want to think about it. Honestly. Now you're getting sad. Getting kind of sad. Mimi, what, what wine should I be drinking when I'm sad like this? What's a good sad wine? Honestly? In the summer? Is that hot? Sancerre. I like Sancerre. Sancerre. Is that red? No, it's white. I'm a red no. person, but in the summer, man, 110 degrees. Do you want a red? I can't do the white. I don't know why. It's just not me. I need a red for me. So for nightcap, I, I think I'll be going sans air. And then just, <laughs> you know, just a pensive gaze of regret. Keep it simple. Just whiskey. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. Um, speaking of nightcap, what's going on with nightcap, fellas? When's the next one? I think it's uh, Thursday, Thursday night, right, Mike? No, Wednesday night. No, what day do you work? Well, this is next week, Scott. This is right next week. Next week. Okay. What day do you release these on, Mark? Thursday. Tuesday. They get released. Oh, oh no. this will be released Tuesday. 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 Oh, Tuesdays. 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 Yeah. Oh, it'll be released Tuesday. So it'll be next. Yeah, Thursday night. Be there. Thursday night. Okay. Sancerre, awesome. whiskey, and uh, whatever else you like. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to congratulate everyone that took advantage of the Let Freedom Ring bundle and they're being able to look over Tate's shoulder right now and see how he works his business. Um, if you were not able to do that, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash lots. Um, not only are you going to be able to take your land investing to the next level, but you'll be able to take your cycling to the next level as well. And fishing, most likely. Is that right, Tate? Sure, why not? Maybe season two we'll go fishing. Should, should we have Tate facing the other way for these podcasts now? I see what you did there, Mike. I see what you did. Come on. If you don't get the joke, go to langeek.com. Yeah, if you don't get the joke, then you're going to go look up lots. Yeah. And, um, that was promotion. That was good. It was clever. Yeah. <laughs> and if you are struggling doing this yourself, don't. Go up that mountain. Either do it live in three days or go over and do it through 16 weeks virtually. Either way, get it done. Get your mailings done. Get your marketings done. Have no ambiguity. If you're doing it right, you're doing it wrong. Do it with a group. Do it with arguably one of the best land investors in the world. Have him be your Sherpa. Scott Todd, Tate Litchfield, if you're going live, any of the lanky coaches. So if you want to really take your business and your life really to the next level, as we go into the second half of 2019, learn more, go to lankgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with the Zen master or the nightcap meister, Scott Bossman. And I think you can even refer to them by their nicknames and they will be just fine. So when you get on the fall, call with them. Be like, nightcap, Zen, what's up, guys? This is cooler. OG is much cooler. Got a few questions for you, right? So definitely do that. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, you're getting a lot of value, please, the biggest favor you can do is just subscribe, subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Bearland Aaron, is this enough plugging for the, for the podcast? I suppose. I mean, it's all good, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think that the big payoff for listening to all this is you get to listen to Mimi's tip of the week. Mimi Schmidt, what do you got? A website, a book, something actionable. I was going to do something different, but since we're talking about the beginning and things that we would do different, don't go create your own spreadsheets. Um, 
I noticed a lot of people don't know about this tip, and I think that we've talked about it here on the podcast before. Out in Airtable, Eric Peterson made a posting domination template that's free. Airtable is free. Go build your inventory lists and all of your account listings out there. Um, instead, I see people build these spreadsheets, and then they're so proud of them, and they, won't, they don't want them to go with them. And it's so hard to bring on a VA and share a spreadsheet. Just go get Eric Peterson's posting domination template and, and make it easy on yourself. Make it easy to hire people and uh, share your information with them. That's my tip. Airtable, Eric Peterson, get her done. Well, I thought this was a really great discussion um, for newbies and experienced investors alike. Lots of gold nuggets out there. Again, if you're getting value, send this to a friend on the interwebs and share the love, share the knowledge, share the passive income bounty, right? There's plenty for everybody. Anyways, um, are we ready to do this? One, two, three, let freedom ring. ring. I love the I love the Bearland Aaron smirk. <laughs> He's just like, yeah. Yep. No. Yep. I just smile while you guys do it because that's all I can do. <laughs> have you you guys protected yourselves? Have you have you? Because all, all of you are at risk. You know that, right? Like all no. of you. Maybe not. No, I've got a post-it note that I put over the camera. Is that what you're talking about? Because of Zoom? There's a link here, but you might want to go and like start updating your Apple Mac product now because of the Zoom um, security thing that, does, that affects the Macs. I don't know. You better protect yourself like now. Zano and I, we're okay. Maybe right. It's not going to happen on the surface. Yeah, it's not going to happen on the surface. So you guys, well, you, it's not going to happen on the surface because most of the surfaces are, all, are already you, broken anyways. Speechless right now. You, you're like, what? what? What do we do here? Oh, my gosh. You're freaking out. You're sweating. Bear, Bear Land, I see the sweat running down to his eyes. He's going to come out. He's going to be here soon. And Mike and I are just chillaxing because the surface is the surface. I bet there's probably at least one other surface owner on this call besides Scott and I just won't own up to it. I'm looking at it. I'm guessing there's one there somewhere. My, my son owns one. I, I think Boston might have made, a, made the switch. No, no switch on my part. Zeno's wasted too much of my time with his. <laughs> Tate, Tate wants to be in. He wants to be in the surface club. He told me, but he's, he's a little on there. Look at him. He's got one. No, he doesn't have it yet. He's, he's on the fence. He's on. Listen, if we get Tate to switch, well, I see, uh, I see the tidal wave of coming, man. I think, yeah, it, I don't know. We, we should do something like Surface versus Mac or. You can have one of these at boot camp if you have a Surface. You have a nice Surface attache. Yeah. Was that a man purse? Yeah. That's right. Beautiful. And I'm proud of it, Aaron. I, that's all I wear when I go. This is my only carry on on the airport. Look at this. That's good. Saving that uh, overhead space for me. <laughs> Pretty sure you bought that for your 13-inch iPad last summer. No, no, no. This came from the Microsoft store. Let's not have any misspoken word. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, well. Go, go update your Macs. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to right now. So you guys, nor normally, I mean, I... Look, you guys are speechless over this thing. You're sweating it. I can see it. Tate's like yeah. searching the web. Like, what I already this saw mean? this. I already, you know, I already saw this. It's like, wow, that is, uh, that is troubling, actually. Yeah, see? But they found it, and they're updating it versus, you know, the, all the, the Microsoft Windows backdoors with all that legacy software going back from the 80s. Yeah, no, it's all good, man. It's all good. I noticed an update last night after the flight school call. I noticed See, an update. Oh, all right. Whatever. All right. The surf I'll give it. The surface is nice. And Microsoft is doing great. They are doing great. Yeah, they really are. I, I will look, I will admit that uh I did over the weekend. Well, over the weekend, I did last week, I did purchase a new iPad. 
which uh, you might be wondering, like, why did I do that? But I bought, I got it because the software that I use when flying is only uh, available on the Mac or the iPad, sorry, the iPad. So if I'm going to fly, I'm going to fly safe. I need to have that. So I got myself a new iPad. It's nice, man. Like the new one's nice. They make good products, Apple does, but I still think that the iPad, the, uh, the Surface is the way to go. What, what does David Schmidt use when he flies? Uh, United Airlines issued iPad. See, there you go, man. Right, iPads. Yeah, there you go. So I don't, I don't know what that says, but I, I think if the most responsible human beings on the planet are using iPads. I've had hey, the book. Look, it's good, man. It's good. But the Surface has the edge for the business. It does. If you're, if you're only going to be a pilot, well, then you need an iPad. It's super convenient. It's smaller than the iPad. It really is. I love it. The only thing that I, the only thing I like about the iPad is that I have service. You know, I can I have uh, internet service. That's the only thing. Or I'd have the service for everything. There you go. All right. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Uh, thank you, listeners, and we'll see everybody next week. <laughs>